up, bookworms? This is Danny Reads, and today I'm going to be wrapping up the two readathons that I participated in last week. Words are hard today. So before I get started, I just want to go into the disclaimer that this is the sixth time that I'm trying to record this video, and things keep going wrong, and I just need, I just want to get this done. So I was going to go day by day in what I've read, but I think I'm just going to wrap up all the books. I feel like it'll be a lot quicker. I don't want this video to be super long, but I did read quite a bit. So let's just get into what I read last week. I will let you know what I read. Um, I'm sorry. What I read, how many pages and or hours it was if I was an audiobook, and uh, what a challenge it covered. So let's just get into it. So the first book that I completed for the readathon was George by Alex Gino. I this um, was the challenge for the LGBTQIA plus challenge for the biannual bibliothon. It has 195 pages. I rated it a four out of five stars. I really did enjoy it. It's really messing up my white balance. I'm sorry. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought that there was potential for it to go farther than it did. I feel like where the story ended was very not a good place to end it. I think it needed at least 20 to 30 more pages to kind of wrap things up, but it is what it is. Um, I really did enjoy it, and if you haven't read it, I do recommend it. So the next book that I finished in this readathon was Atlantia by Ali Condi. I gave it a two out of five stars. This was for the challenge of read a host's favorite genre, which was Kelly's, which was dystopian. I did not enjoy this book whatsoever. Um, it was a total of eight hours. And yeah, if I was reading it physically, I probably would have DNF'd it. Um, if you want a more in-depth on how I feel about it, I did talk about it in my July wrap-up, which I will add card above. But yeah, I don't recommend it. I'm sorry. I, I gotta be brutally honest when it comes to that. But I did finish it, so it does count for a challenge. I then picked up and finished The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. This is about a girl who lives in a... Um, more of a low-class uh, neighborhood in Chicago and it is all written in vignettes. I loved it. I thought it was really great. Um, I gave it a four out of five stars. This um, completes the challenge of read a book uh, in one day. And this book was only 110 pages so I flew through it. I thought it was really really good. I probably would have got it done in one sitting if I wasn't reading it in between doing laundry and all that other fun stuff. But yeah. Really glad I picked this up. Next, I finished Saga Volume 5 by Fiona Staples and Brian K. Vaughn. I really liked it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The other ones were 5 out of 5 stars for me. I feel like this was a necessary novel or a necessary installment, but it was still kind of boring. Um, so, or it wasn't as, I don't know, I just didn't like it just as much as 1 through 4. So, that's why I gave it 4 out of 5 stars, but I am really excited to get to 6 and 7, which I hear picks back up again. And this um, is for the challenge of the throwback challenge for the Bibliothon, and so I picked Read a Graphic Novel. Then I picked up This Book is Gay by James Dawson. I got 26 pages in and I did not finish it. I was going to read this for Read a Band of Book for the Bibliothon. But it is, it reads way too much like an instruction manual, so I really want to sit down and really read this um, and take it all in, and so it's not a readathon read, so I did put this down, but I will be picking it back up really, really soon. Then I listened to and finished You'll Grow Out of It by Jesse Klein. I really, really enjoyed this book. I gave it a four out of five stars. It's about, it's about this girl, Jesse, who, um, or it's about Jesse. The, and she is a tomboy when she's younger and she just never really grows out of it. She never really knows how to be a girl. I really connect with that and so it was about a three star read for me most of the way through because some of the stuff was kind of going over my head about her getting into stand-up comedy and all that stuff and I was like okay I wasn't really relating to that but then at the end she talks about going through IVF and if any of you guys don't know, if you're new or, you know, just haven't seen the videos where I've talked about it, because I don't talk about it too often, um, my spouse and I, Heather, are actually trying to have a baby. So we are going through the fertility doctors and all that stuff. So when Jessie talks about it in her book, I just, yeah, I, ah, oh, it just, it made me feel so good that someone went, like, and like literally had the same thoughts as I did. 
So it was just really great to kind of find that connection with someone that I've never met before and will never meet in my life. I did give this a 4 out of 5 stars and it was a 6 hour audiobook. Then after I finished You'll Grow Out of It, I did start Unwind by Neil Shusterman and I did complete this. This was like a seven and a half hour audiobook. I really, really enjoyed this book. I think I gave it a four out of five stars. Um, if not, I will correct myself somewhere on the screen. I really enjoyed it. I'm surprised it took me so long to get to it. Having said that, um, I feel like the way it ended was fine with me. Um, I know this is a series. Um, I will pick up the rest of the series eventually. I do own the second book, but it's not a priority because I feel like it kind of ended not super happy, but like if it was a standalone, I would have been satisfied with the ending of this book. So that's where I am with that. This did not count for any of the challenges, but I was super happy just to have read it. The next book I finished for the for both readathons was The Boxcar Children, The Yellow House Mystery. This was 191 pages and I liked it. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars um, for it being a children's book. I just feel like it was really repetitive. You can kind of tell that these were written quite a few years ago um, because of how they refer to some of the things in this book. Um, I think these were published in, or they were published for the first time in 1953 so that kind of shows in these books not that it's super horrible but you could just tell that we don't say things like that anymore um, I did give this like I said a three out of five stars it was 191 pages and this counted for two different challenges um, for the bibliothon it covered the challenge of read a book that is um, that you discovered not on booktube so I knew about these books when I was little um, from going to the library and you know finding these and then the other challenge was to read a book with a person on the cover there are four people on the cover so nailed it the next book that I completed for this readathon was The Princess Saves Herself in This One by Amanda Lovelace I love this this is a book of poems about pretty much her growing up and learning life lessons and it was really really good I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, it was 190. Let's see. 191 pages. Um, this For this, it completes the challenge of reading a book completely outside. And the last book that I completed for both the readathons, and that was Crank by Ellen Hopkins. I This is a reread for me. I love this book. It is. 537 pages, but as everyone who's read Ellen Hopkins know, it's written in verse. So there's like next to no words on the page and you just fly through it. This is about a girl who gets uh, addicted to meth and just kind of how she goes about that addiction. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a five out of five stars just like the first time. But this one also covered two challenges as well. For the Bibliothon, it was read a banned book. And for the Booktubeathon, it was read about a character that's completely different from you with her being a meth addict. I've never even touched drugs ever in my life. So we are totally different when it comes to that. So yeah, that completes two more challenges, 537 pages. Five out of five stars. The next book that I started reading um, for the readathon and just didn't have time to finish, I lost a lot of steam towards the end of the booktubeathon slash a bibliothon. When Saturday hit, I was kind of just over reading and I felt like I just had burned myself out a little too quickly. But I did get quite far in To All the Boys I Love Before by Jenny Han. I love this book. I don't like contemporary. I really don't. Um, I do get in the mood for it once in a while, but most of the time it's just not my jam. But this book, I'm just really happy that I'm reading. I got to page 195 in this book during the readathon, and yeah, I'm just I'm super excited to finish it. I'm sad I didn't finish it for the readathon, but that's okay. This would have been for um, the challenge of read a hyped book. The last book that I started but did not finish was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Um, honestly, with this being a reread, I it wasn't a priority to finish. Um, it would have completed the challenges of read a book to movie adaptation for the Bibliothon and then 
read a book that you bought for the cover, which I had my other, I have another, um, what is it? I have another set of these, um, the ones with the illustrations on it. Yeah, that was the one that I bought for the cover because obviously I already owned Harry Potter, so I didn't need to buy them, but I needed them. So yeah, I didn't, I only got to page nine of this. I will definitely be re reading it very, very soon, but yeah, it just, it wasn't a priority, so it kind of got put to the back burner and just was forgotten about. All right, that is all that I read for the readathon. Re read slash listen to for the readathon. I feel like I did. I did the best I could, and I feel like that's a win for the readathons. I know people are like, oh, you only win if you complete all the challenges and read seven books. I don't think so. I think if you go out there, have fun and read more than you expected to, I feel like you're winning. Like you did a really good job. So I'm just really excited. Let's get the um, final stats of everything and wrap all this stuff up. All right, so the final stats for these readathons was I listened to 20.5 hours of audiobooks. I read uh, 1,604 pages of physical books and I completed five challenges from the Bibliothon and five challenges from the Booktubeathon. Not too shabby for my first actual readathon that I actually committed to. So I hope that everyone else had so much fun this past week because I did. Uh, leave it down below links to your Booktubeathon wrap ups, all that fun stuff. Let me know what you read. Let me know if you're totally burned out now or if you're gonna continue reading. Um, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Like I said, comment down below with your wrap-ups or what you read or what you enjoyed that you saw that I read. If you read it too, we can talk about it. We can do all the things in the comments. I love talking to you guys. So yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you are a new subscriber, because I know um, I got quite a few um, added since the Booktubeathon has started. Hello, welcome, welcome to the family. Uh, here we are. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm a little bit sporadic today, but after trying to film this about six or seven times, I just really wanted to get this done. So yes, I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep reading, keep smiling. Bye guys.